Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about how to ace technical coding interviews. I know for a lot of us, or myself anyways, this is the most terrifying part of landing your first technical or coding role, or really even if you're a senior developer anywhere in your career, the technical interview process can, from the outside looking in, seem very terrifying. I want to share with you some tips and tricks that have really helped me navigate technical interviews and ensure that I'm giving my best foot forward. Before we go any further though, I want to say a big shout out to some of these awesome subscribers. Thank you for your questions and your support. You all are just amazing. Also, make sure if you haven't already to hit the subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. Okay, let's get started. I also want to note that there are so many different ways that you can take different technical coding quizzes or interviews, I should say, from take-home coding tests, over the phone, in-person whiteboarding, in-person um, how would you build an app. Also, I've had some friends who have done kind of like Zoom or video calls where the interviewer is actually watching them code, the person's coding from home and the interviewer is watching them code. So there is a ton of different ways that you can be quizzed on your technical skills. And I also think it's important to note that a lot of times, if you aren't fully prepared for a technical interview, your best foot is not going to be put forward. You're going to stumble over things that you typically would know. And I don't know, I'm gonna be really honest here. A lot of times in technical interviews, all I want to yell out is, in a real job, I would Google this, but I understand the point of them, which is essentially to understand your way of thinking, your way of logic, as well as to really test you on some of the basic knowledge. Where does your foundation lie when you don't have the computer or Google or Stack Overflow at your hand? And this brings me to my first point, which is actually nothing to do with a technical skill at all. Be enthusiastic. I list this as number one because there is nothing worse for an interview than having an interviewee come in and a, feel like they know everything, or B, feel like they don't want to be there. And in turn, your energy and what you're putting out there will be really quickly read by the interviewer, and that will kind of base what the interview is going to be like um, with what kind of energy you bring in. Obviously, typically you are nervous um, and kind of have these jitters about the situation, but make sure you go in there with some enthusiasm that you actually want to be there. Make the interview feel the interviewer feel like it's worth their time being there as well, that you've done research on their company and you are there because you actually want to be, not just because this is one company out of many who has called you in for a technical interview. The next step I wanna share with you is study common interview questions. And this is something that I kept on getting told over and over again is to know your basic algorithms, uh, to have a strong foundation. And I can tell you honestly, I remember doing some technical interviews, more so during my coding bootcamp, there was these mock technical interviews that we needed to do. And through them, it was a great way to really understand where I was prepared and where I wasn't prepared. And definitely if you didn't spend some time, and oftentimes a lot of time, preparing and understanding these basic algorithm questions that are asked over and over again at different companies in different ways or different forms of questions, it's really going to be difficult for you, especially if you are a junior developer, to fully uh, you know, be able to stand up, whiteboard, and answer those questions correctly. And once again, you might know the answer or it's something that typically you could solve right away, but when you're standing up there in front of you know, one or two other people who are watching you and judging you on what you put onto this whiteboard, it's intimidating. Okay, before we go any further though, I want to share with you some tips that really helped me with improving my data structure and algorithm skills. The first one being focus on less problems, not more. And here's what I mean. When you analyze a problem in depth, this is what it means. You can code it quickly. You can code it with the correct syntax, which means you're actually good at the language. You can write clean code. You can apply the same code to a new problem quickly and you know the data structure you are using and can implement it if asked to. When you've mastered a few different kind of algorithms and data structures and that you feel really confident about that you know inside and out, what this will do is A, give you a solid foundation because if you're trying to learn everything at once, in turn, you're going to learn nothing. But also too, what it will do is 
with these questions, with these algorithms that you can now confidently solve, you're going to start seeing a pattern in a lot of different algorithms as you continue on and on. So for example, if you have a basis of say, I don't know, well, quite a few, but not a crazy amount of algorithms that you have under your belt, when you go into an interview, you'll start seeing that even if the question is asked differently, if you understand and really break it down as to what they are asking, there's gonna be a pattern and you can take a lot of the logic from different algorithms that you have learned and apply to it. And when looking for good places to practice your algorithms, of course, I think the number one place that everyone recommends, and I completely agree, is Leap Code. They have so many different algorithms of different levels that you can solve and making it fun in the sense that you can keep track of what you have solved, where you currently are, and kind of making it more of a fun challenge. And I find a lot of times the questions on Leap Code are very similar, if not taken and applied to interview questions. Another two resources, actually two books I would recommend uh, for learning algorithms and kind of gaining those skills include Elements of Programming Interviews and of course Cracking the Coding Interview, which is I think a very classic staple for many people. So if you haven't checked out those two books, I highly recommend you do. Also as a side note, I don't know if anyone else has done this. Well, actually a lot of people have because I think the course has like half a million views, but I, when I was learning algorithms and kind of brushing up on it, I took a course on Udemy, I waited till there was a sale and um, took an algorithms course and what it did was it actually went through, I'll link it down below, but it went through really popular interview uh, questions that they ask or around algorithms, but not only did you have to solve the problems, but it broke it down for you. It said, okay, you know, this is why we did this, this is why we did this next part and although there is definitely not one way to solve algorithms typically. It was a really great way to get in the mindset and the understanding as to what the question really was, what we were really solving, and finding different solutions for it. So I'll link it down below, but that Udemy course really helped me in um, kind of understanding algorithms better. And maybe that's because I come from a non-typical CS background, uh, but I think really in general, it would help a lot of people. On that note though of CS, my next tip, my number three tip, would be to brush up on your CS fundamentals. And yes, I'm looking at you self-taught programmers and bootcamp programmers. Even if you're actually a CS grad, make sure you know the fundamentals because a lot of times after you graduate, things can go out the window. And what I mean by this is, regardless of what path you came from, you need to take a step back and ensure that you have a clear understanding of the CS fundamentals. There are so many different resources out there to learn CS fundamentals or brush back up on them, especially once again, if you're coming from a coding bootcamp or a self-taught kind of background and you really never had the opportunity to sit down and learn these fundamentals. It's a great way you can spend a weekend or a week. Don't get me wrong, you will not know everything in a weekend or a week. When I say this, I mean the fundamentals, taking a course online such as from edX, they have a great computer science 101 course, which I will link down below. And of course, you're not going to come out with all this knowledge and um, you know what you will get from going to computer science uh, undergrad. However, what it will do is help you brush up on some of the basics and feel more confident going into the interview, especially if people who are interviewing you are some people who think they need to use big terms or big words and want you to you know portray the same, which, by the way, if they are doing that, I don't know. If you're into that, then of course that's a great company. But for me, just keep it real. Just be honest, just be real. Um, but unfortunately, sometimes you have to play the game a little bit when it comes to the interview process. On that note though, of keeping it real and just being yourself during the interview, it brings me to my fourth tip, which is ask the interviewer questions. And relating to technical interviews, what I mean by this is, if you are up on a whiteboard going through a problem, don't just silently stand up there and write out the algorithm. Even if you know exactly the best solution and best way to do it, that's great, but that's such a small part of what an interviewer is actually looking for. If you're not asking them questions, engaging with them, you know, showing your thought process, they're going to be wondering, is this how this person is going to be to work with? Are they just going to sit there, not talk, not ask questions, maybe not even, you know, if you get asked an algorithm question and you feel like, hmm, actually they should have framed it in this way, or 
you know, some positive feedback that you can give to the interviewer to improve, that's amazing too. At the end of the day, they don't want someone who doesn't have an opinion, who doesn't want to speak up, who doesn't really want to be a leader. Of course, there's roles and places out there for that, but you really want to shine during this interview and show the interviewer what you can do, what you're capable of. And part of that is just even walking through your mindset and asking questions. When I was going through my coding bootcamp, one thing they taught me, and it actually really made me feel more comfortable when I started to apply for jobs, which was when you get asked a question about an algorithm to solve, rather than just like picking up the whiteboarding marker and starting to write right away, take a drink of water if you have water, breathe, think about it, and at the very least, repeat back part of the question to the interviewer. Okay, so I just want to clarify, you want this, this, and this, correct? Yes, okay, great, thanks for clarification. Just to show A, that you really understand the problem because there is nothing worse, and I've heard so many horror stories of people who, when you're nervous, you think you hear one thing, but it's really a different thing, and you get up there, solve the algorithm and maybe it's perfect, but the interviewer is gonna be looking at you like, you didn't do what I asked, you didn't listen, which even if you solve the algorithm perfectly is going to be a huge red flag for the interviewer. So ask your questions. Alongside with asking questions, as I mentioned, make sure to walk through your thought process. So when you are writing out your, uh, your algorithm or going through the problem, speak out loud as to why you are doing what you are doing. And, you know, I decided to do a for loop uh, here because this, we are iterating over this, or I decided to use a uh, map method or filter method or whatever kind of thing you are using and explain to them why you are using that. Not only will that give the interviewer more insight as to what you are doing and really help understand, but also too, it's a really great way to show off your skills show off what you know and how much and in depth you know about that. Okay, and that brings me to my next point, which is to talk about trade-offs. And what I mean by this is during your technical interview or for a lot of technical interviews, what they're doing now or the newer kind of thing, and when I say newer, it's been around for a while, but I, I feel like it's more common as of recent, is instead of getting you to whiteboard a specific algorithm question, they will do, build me an app, build me Twitter, build me Facebook. And before you panic, they're not actually asking you to sit down code and build this social media platform in 24 hours, or I guess really like 30 minutes while you're at your interview. What they're asking is you to write or draw out the structure of the application and how you would build it. And what this does is it shows interviewers how your thought process is, how you break things down, but also too, it shows your knowledge of different kind of um, technologies, different databases, different programming languages, and why you chose what you chose. So for example, if you were asked to build Twitter and you say you would use React for this on the front end and on the back end, you would use a non-relational database and this is how you would connect the APIs together and this is how you would save the user's login information, etc. When you are going through that, explaining that this is the technologies you would use, one thing you really need to highlight is why you would use them. Okay, well, why would you use this database compared to another one? And this not only shows that you have knowledge about the technologies you want to use, but also shows why you would use them, what the benefits are, what the cons are. And it's a really great way to highlight and you know show your knowledge on different technologies and don't let this become overwhelming though if you're like tiffany i only know the murren stack or i only know this stack how am i supposed to compare it to other technologies at the end of the day you don't need to know a ton about other technologies to do this but what you do need to have is a good understanding of the technologies you do know and what are some pros and cons of them rather than comparing them to specific other technologies if you don't know. Um, obviously, if you do know, that's great, and that's another kind of like star, but if you don't, just compare uh, the pros and cons that what that technology has to offer. And my last tip, which I think has been an underlying tone or maybe an obvious one throughout this entire video is practice. You cannot practice enough, or I mean, don't go trying to do 500 different algorithms in one day or anything like that, but 
set aside some realistic time every day that you can sit down and practice because at the end of the days, I feel like it's the only way you can really get good at algorithms is spending time on them and practicing. And on that note, I want to say that passing interviews, especially technical interviews, is a skill in itself. Being good at them is its own unique skill. Even amazing or great programmers can have trouble passing technical coding interviews. There are so many things that essentially are really, I don't want to say against you, but they're not in your favor. I mean, especially if you are someone who isn't, you know, a pro at interviewing, hasn't done it a ton before, standing up there, you know, wearing these like uncomfortable clothes, usually trying to look like professional, having people stare at you as you talk through a problem or work through the whiteboard question can be very intimidating and just kind of feel like it's not even worth going through, which it is. And I always keep in mind, which really helps ease me, is going through these interviews, I'm interviewing them just as much as they are interviewing me. And I really, really hope that you can take that advice and keep it in mind too, because what that does is if you go into an interview and you realize that these people are not supportive, they aren't really you know, helping me when I ask them questions or being straightforward or kind of snickering at me, whatever the case may be, maybe it's not the place you'd want to work and you have to take that into mind too how are the inter people who are interviewing you treating you are they someone that you could see yourself working with every day or is it going to be like this really stressful environment that if you need help or you have a question to ask it's going to be this big it's going to be hard to get any answers or help from anyone because if that's the case it definitely doesn't sound like a great company um, so keep that in mind that you're interviewing them as well Okay, going to wrap up that video on that note. I think at the end of the day, continue to practice. You got this. It's not easy, but you are not alone in the way you feel. Um, when you're feeling really nervous or overwhelmed going into an interview, just remain calm. I mean, for me, actually, what I did was I bought a little whiteboard and practiced with that at home, and that really helped me too. Um, and then also, as I mentioned, Leak Code is a great resource that I'm sure you've heard about, but really take advantage of it. Cracking the Coding Interview is another amazing book. And there's so many other resources out there that you just really need to be motivated enough to essentially help yourself. Go find these resources, start learning, and you will get to where you need to be. Thank you all for watching my video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button for more tech and coding related content and leave in the comments other videos you would like to see. As I always mention, I make all these videos around what you request and what you really want to see. So make sure to drop it in the comments. Thanks everyone.